Hello, welcome. Today I am once again reading from the Wizard's Companion, Companion, and we're gonna see if we had any new progress playing this game, which actually we did. I already know we have a ton of new stuff to look at. So the first creature we've seen recently uh, is the Purloiner, and this is actually one of our familiars now because I caught one. A thief who robs rich families just for the thrill of it, before swiftly returning to his ill-gotten gains. Okay, he's a thief. All right, like kind of like a Robin Hood type, maybe. Although it just says that it's for fun, so not a good influence for sure. Up next, we have Hobgoblin. It lives with its pals in the mountains and uses its club for hunting and stirring stews. Then we have Bob Speed. This must have been um, one of like must have been a quest one when they usually are different colors so soon. Can you see them? It pilfers weapons from unwary travelers and melts them down to make its own bespoke equipment this one i mean yeah it looks really cool it's like decked out Oops. cool it's like decked out in armor this one's like the i mean not to say it's like downgraded but i mean what's interesting is that we've seen this is a new familiar here not a familiar i don't know what they're called creature this is the ruffian so we have the rough the ruffian and a gruffian which is pretty funny and we only own a ruffian which is interesting is this the evolved version i know that um no, I don't think it's evolved or whatever. I, I don't think... Yeah, no. Okay. This creature seems weak and slow when met, but while the sun is out, it strikes with breathtaking speeds. Very cool. Very cool that there's like three species of this or the three types of this. Okay, same like with the rough and the ruffian and the gruffian. We have the rhinosaur, rhino snore, and rhino boar. That's really cute. I like that they do this. Okay. Rhino snore. La a lazy creature when it does da deign to move, it tends to drag its belly along sluggishly. Yeah, I get that feeling too. Let me see, I like to look at the differences of their tails. Very cool. Up next we have the Wombat. Though it generally prefers to keep to the dark nooks it calls home, it will rush to the rescue if the senses its allies are in danger. Very cute. I have one of these too. This is another one I tamed. So we have Drongo, right? This is uh, Westerface's familiar, but we recently evolved it into a Strongo, pretty sure. Okay, um, this helpful healer cannot stand to see his allies injured and never fails to come to their aid. I mean, I really like the- it's such- it's subtle differences, but like, I love the color changes. Up next, we have a very cute Tuwit. A nocturnal creature whose gimlet eyes are said to see nothing but the truth. Yeah, I don't even remember really fighting any of these. But it says I defeated three. Very cute. And then we have the small fry, which I've shown. And then deep fry. This cheapy chap can be found in Old Smokey, carrying a pair of carrying a pair of flaming stones around with it wherever it goes. No one knows why. See, it's funny because I have a deep fry. Oh, I did catch a small fry. I must have caught a deep fry on accident. But that's fine. Have both. Next, we have a monolith, an ancient stone tablet that has been brought to life. It is robust and difficult to damage. So, also, we leveled up, evolved our lagoon naiad, and now it's a sea naiad. A creature that dwells in coastal coves. This fragrant gem it carries possesses purifying powers. Yes. So, very cute. It's like, like a jellyfish. Sea Sprout is also now Sprout Sprite. The heavy bud that has formed on this creature's head adversely affects its balance. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you know what? I bet maybe it'll bloom. Maybe it's just like, it is, I guess, getting kind of bigger. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe, I don't know. Then we have a hula balloon. Its body is encased in a brown balloon, letting it float on the wind to its heart content. Its body is encased in a brown balloon. How is that even? Okay. Well, very interesting. Very creepy. If I do say my so myself. But still cool. And we have the shrimp paler. Spawned from the spear of an evil warrior, this malevolent creature likes to jab everyone it comes across. I wonder if they're calling it shrimp because like, oh, like another word for like little. But it doesn't look like an actual shrimp. So. I'm assuming that's what they mean by shrimp paler. Like, or shrimp like imp. You know, impaler, imp, impaler. It's a little demon. Okay. 
Then we have Mademoiselle. A creature power powered by lava. The crater on her back has earned her the nickname Walking Volcano. It's not really a nickname. That's, that's like what she is. Kind of creepy, honestly, the more you look at it. <laughs> it's like very... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, here is one of the newer bosses we fought recently, Multan. He was super hard, at least to me. This magma spewing giant lives at the peak of Old Smoky. Its mighty roar echoes throughout the mountains. And it's now like under a giant rock in lava. But it looks super cool. It's super cool, I think. Glowing toes. Glowing fingers. I just realized actually it's a dinosaur. Like it's like a stegosaurus or something. Something like that. I don't know how I didn't notice this before. Is that a stegosaurus? Whichever the ones with the spikes. You know what I'm talking about. Land before time. Okay. Oh, then we have Alchemy, which was a boss I was not expecting. The genie of the cauldron. He only serves masters whom he has tested and deemed worthy. Because we just got our first cauldron, we learned how to do alchemy. And we had to fight him. We have Swain's Nightmare. This vicious, violent, possessed... This vicious, violent spirit possessed Swain after the restraint was stolen from his heart. Yeah, and that's like our next objective. I have to get some restraint for Swain. But you can see the difference between Rusty's Nightmare and Swain. So, you know, we have Griffey. It's one of our familiars. Now we have Greater Griffey because I evolved it. And it looks super cool. I really like this version of it more. This creature's piercing gaze strikes fear into the hearts of its prey. Once it has set its sights on a target, its victim has little chance of escape. How cool would it be to actually have a pet griffin? And how convenient. And that's all the new uh, creatures we've seen so far. The only new place I think we've been... I mean, we went to... Uh, is Old Smoky. And as you can see, we have not found all the treasure here. Like, I feel like we found barely any of it. So we will definitely have to go back. And here's our progress report. 31% uh, 30 per Wizards Companion completion. 16% Creature compen Compendium completion. 20% Task completion. 1% Alchemy completion. Wow. Yeah, I've, I've made one thing um, with the alchemy, and it was strong coffee. Like, it doesn't- the alchemy doesn't really support random- random things. It's hard to just come up with something random, so I'm trying to say. So now I'm gonna go through the actual Wizard's Companion and read anything we haven't read yet. Okay, so this is one of the first new spells we got, which I think is really cool. I'm still kind of, like, using it in the field. But it's Nature's Tongue. Converse freely with both flora and fauna. Many are the times when men and women wish that they could converse with the plants and animals which share their lives. Wizards, meanwhile, know that wishing is an inefficient technique and choose instead to cast nature's tongue. It allows you to glean from the living world the kind of information that is quite beyond the reach of the ordinary human. And we've gotten to talk so far to a crab and a pigeon, multiple pigeons. Uh, so that's really cool. I can't wait to talk to plants. It says, it says that we can talk to plants too. And now we can talk to all those things and also ghosts. So I think that's a really cool spell. I wonder how else they'll use it in the game. But it's, it's cute. This is another new spell we got. Vacate. Make a hasty exit from a per perilous situation. Fleeing in the face of danger is sometimes the wisest and the bravest course of action. This spell allows you to do just that, no matter how many walls stand between you and freedom. Note that the sheer intensity of the translocation process makes it unsuitable for long distance travel. Okay, yeah. It will, however, reliably extricate you from any cave, maze, or gingerbread house that you happen to blunder into. That's really cool. So I thought vacate was like escape from battle, but I wonder if it's like, you know, like you're in, the, in a map like Golden Grove and you want to get out because Golden Grove has a bigger map than I thought. Uh, if, if it actually works that way. I haven't used it yet, so I don't know. Okay, next new spell we have, number 33, uh, rune 33, Burden. Add extra heft to a particular object or person. Burden is an incomparably versatile spell that simply increases the weight of its target. Render a creature incapable of movement or attack, crush an object or unsuspecting enemy, or penetrate armor using supernaturally heavy pins. Possibilities are endless. And always having a range of options is the mark of a fine wizard. That's really interesting. That actually, that's really interesting. I've never even heard of a spell like this. Making someone so heavy they can't move or something like that. 
So we haven't gotten any new Tales of Wonder yet. But I did not read about Castaway Cove yet. I remember skipping it because I didn't want to spoil it for myself before I got there. Castaway Cove. A village of maritime merchants and fearless fishermen. Castaway Cove is part of the Mamuni Empire, which I didn't know, which was actually really interesting, and is known as the hub of the world's Babana trade. It is also home to fishermen who use unique vessels and known as flying boats. First time visitors often find the hustle and bustle somewhat intimidating. To and first time visitors often find the hustle and bustle somewhat intimidating, to say nothing of the dress code, but most end up not wanting to leave. Hmm? I actually didn't feel like it was like, I mean, I guess there are kind of a few people there because it is like a trade important place, I guess, but it also, it's also very chill, very chill vibes too. All right, essential information, climate, hot and humid, but with a pleasant breeze, local delicacies, dumb flounders, glow shrimps, local character, rough and ready, but kind hearted, Local sports, flying boat racing. Street merchants and their wares. The street peddlers of Castaway Cove are world renowned. Their stalls are good places to find both unexpected treasures and utter tat. It is up to you to try and tell the difference. It is a cool place. I really like it. I wish it was bigger, but it's cool. But yeah, there's actually a shorter reading this time around because uh, despite as much as we've progressed in this game, I mean, there's not much to the Wizard's Companion right now, except for getting maybe a couple new spells. Because I don't read the alchemy or the equipment because it would just, it's kind of tedious. And we're going to see hopefully a lot of these things in game. But I do, when I do play, I do open this because that's how I learned how to make strong coffee. Now that I can alchemize, you know, you know, turn to a page and see if I have the proper ingredients. It's very realistic if you like had to use a book to learn and then like because it's not like it tells you where each ingredient is on each page you just kind of have to hope for the best you know yes thank you for watching this uh episode of me reading the wizard's companion and uh i hope you're enjoying the playthrough of this game if you're watching that too you can watch me put this game live on twitch i don't have a schedule but i stream trying to stream at least two to three times a week and I post when I go live on Instagram and Twitter. Um, same name is Saru. You can find my links below. I post uh, right before I go live. Usually like 15 minutes before. Yes. I will see you later. Goodbye.